Morning folks, February the 14th, this is our shortened version of worship for today as we are in church. This is also Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's to all you who are joining with us this morning. We're going to start with a little bit of singing, and we're going to hear some passages, a message. I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Sing it with me. I said yes, Lord, yes. for the Christian. I have a question. You are what you eat. Have you ever heard that saying before? Well, what does it mean to you when you hear it? Now, I looked it up. Well, the proverbial saying, you are what you eat, is the notion that to be fit and healthy, you need to eat good food. Well, today we're going to learn another meaning for this old saying, you are what you eat. You're going to hear one of the most controversial passages found in the Gospel of John. And that will be our focus today. It's a very controversial passage. But if you listen closely, this is the passage that sets the stage for Holy Communion as we know it in the church today. I always thought it was uh, the passage where they have the Last Supper. But that's more of an agape meal of friends gathering to chat and eat together and worship. But this is different. This passage sets the stage for Holy Communion as we know it. Before we get in, we're going to hear some of the scripture. I'm just going to read a little bit. But before that, let's, let's prepare for the reading. said we're going to hear from John 6 and actually what I would like you to do is read the full context of this I'm not going to read it all but these are verses 25 through 59 to get the full understanding I'm going to start with verse 27 do not work for food that spoils but for the food that sustains you for eternal life 
which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Now we get that from his baptism in the Jordan, don't we? The seal of approval that Jesus received. Then we go to th verse 35. Jesus declares something. I am the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whosoever believes in me will never be thirsty. We heard him at the well with the woman offering water, living water for her to drink. Now he is telling us, I am the bread of life. So down to verses 38 and 40. For I come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me, Jesus said. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. And then we get down to John 53, this is 6, 53 to 59. This is the part that I'm saying is so controversial because the Jews did not understand what Jesus was saying here. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I will remain in them. These are strong, passionate words he's offering. It's symbolic for us, but can you not see the foundations of Holy Communion being laid here. He goes on to say, Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whosoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Now, he was teaching this in the synagogue in Capernaum, and he did this just after he left feeding the 5,000. Hold on to that. Let us pray. Gracious God, we just come into your presence asking your spirit to open our hearts and minds to the word, that we might gain something, take something home from the message today. Well, this is the last Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Next Sunday begins Lent. And next Sunday, we're going to look at another passage that's quite controversial. It's called the Transfiguration Story, but we'll hold that for next week. Early on in the Gospel, we heard Jesus offering living water, didn't we, to the woman at the well, telling her that he himself is the Messiah, the Anointed One. She is not quite convinced until he recites her entire life story to her. And what does she do? Why, she runs off to the community to tell everyone. She runs off to tell everyone, you must come and see the man who knows Everything, she says. In the reading today, we hear Jesus making another astonishing claim. Yes, we do. That he is the bread of life come down from heaven. Jesus said, if you drink of my living water, you will never be thirsty again. Jesus said, if you drink of my living water, Jesus 
who feeds on this bread will never be hungry or thirsty again, he says. In verse 27, we heard, do not work for food that spoils, but for the food that sustains you for eternal life. Jesus is telling his listeners that this bread he offers feeds and nourishes, yes, feeds and nourishes eternal life for the believer. This is pretty astonishing. As you begin to see that Jesus appears to embody much more than just his human form, are you beginning to see that Jesus embodies much more than this human form he has taken. The Apostle Paul, along with John, has labeled Jesus to be the Christ, or the entity that was there in the very beginning with God. We read it early on. Jesus himself makes the claim to be the Anointed One, the Messiah, to the woman at the well. He also says, if you have seen the work I do, then you have seen the Father's work. These are not my words, but the words of the one who sent me. May I suggest here that he is saying, if you can see through my physical form, my physical human form, you can see God and the will of God at work within me. Let us hear again this, this claim, the bread of life. Jesus declares, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me, will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away, he says. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I shall not lose, I shall not lose any of those he gave but raise them up on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, he says. This is so astonishing. May I suggest that Jesus is the embodiment of God's will in human form? Not God himself, he doesn't claim that. But in some strange way, he is the same as God. As we heard from the reading earlier, the Jews in the synagogue were, well, they were really getting upset. Is this not just Jesus of Nazareth, the carpenter's son? The son of Joseph? We know his mother and we know his father. How can he say, 
I came down from heaven. Jesus tells him, once again, I am the living bread come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, he says. This bread is my flesh. His followers were shocked at his remarks. How can he give us his flesh to eat? Verse 53, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. You see, he tells his listeners, you and I, the disciples of the time, if you do this, I will remain in you, and you will, in turn, remain in me. Isn't that amazing? Truly, this must be the cup of salvation. This is the true meaning of the sacrament of Holy Communion. There are many ways that we Christians, well, symbolically take Jesus in, aren't there? We do so by feasting on his words, by making a covenant with him during our baptism to follow in his ways and to partake in the act of Holy Communion. This passage holds the very foundation for the sacredness of Holy Communion as we know it in the church today. When the bread and wine are blessed, it symbolizes the flesh and blood of Christ shed for us and is received with the blessing of eternal life that Jesus has promised. This is pretty astonishing. Water, words, wine, and bread are all biblical symbols <clears throat> of both life and death. Pardon me. <clears throat> May I suggest to you that the ritual of baptism and communion and the participation in these rituals are essential to the fullness of the Christian life. May the Lord bless and keep us, we pray. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, next week we're going to look at something else. It's another controversial, but it ties together with Jesus at the very beginning in Genesis 26. It also explains for us the passage that comes from um, Paul that talks about Jesus is Lord of both the living and the dead. And so I, I hope that you're going to tune in for that because I'm sure you're going to enjoy the insights that John, the mystic, gives to us. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day.
until next week, may the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lift up his face. We'll bring you peace, bring you peace, bring you peace. Until next week.